Hey everybody, thanks for watching this Premiere on Script video where we're going to go into the Adobe add-on store, which can be found at exchange.adobe.com slash add-ons. And we're going to look into two add-ons that I find just huge in writing scripts and getting things to run in Premiere. These two add-ons are going to provide two different resources for us. One being the ability to dig down through items in Premiere and find out what type of methods and properties are attached to those items. And the next being an easy way to launch your scripts within Premiere without having to go through the hassle of creating your own HTML panel. The two add-ons are Property Explorer and JSX Launcher. And we're gonna start with walking through the JSX Launcher add-on because it's a lot easier, we can get through it real quick, and Property Explorer is gonna take a little longer to explain. So if I jump in Premiere, I'm in this project uh, that I edited my previous video about creating bins and sequences and moving them around. And I have the JSX launcher already open. Uh, you can get to it from up here. It's open. And when you launch this for the first time, it's going to ask you for a folder. If you have already launched it and you want to target a folder, you can go to select script folder. And what this means is it's asking you to target a folder on your computer where you store your scripts that you've been writing. So for this example, I'm gonna to go to my blog folder and to the log4 folder, which is where I have those two .jsx files that I created for last week's video. And then once I select that, you can see that right here in Premiere, I have buttons that will trigger both of those scripts to run. If I click on the top one, you can see it performs the same function that we wrote last week. Now it's not gonna perform this correctly because I already had stuff set up in this movie and I'm just gonna control Z back to reset back to what my project looked like before. Last week we were targeting items and bins based on their index values and, and those are gonna get thrown off because of my project is already set up. But you can see just that easily I can write a script and run it. Now this is limited when it comes to inputs. I can't have in my HTML panel, you know, check boxes or, or form fields to specify the output of my script. But if you're just running a script that has no inputs and all it needs is a button click, by all means use this. This is a great way to test out your scripts, weed out all the bugs before putting in the time of creating your custom HTML panel. So I highly recommend the JSX Launcher if nothing else, just as a resource to have around for quick access to your scripts. Now let's jump over and go to the next add-on, the Property Explorer. And I have just recently found this. I think I've had this for maybe a month now. And I wish so badly that I could have had this for the entire time that I've been learning how to write these scripts. Property Explorer is an add-on that allows you to target items in your Premiere project and find out the properties and methods that are attached to those. It is so much quicker than the process on trying to find out how to access things that I would go through before. But before going into this, I want to show you that process first. So if I jump over into extend script, the first thing we're going to look at is the data browser. This is where I would begin doing my digging if I was searching for something that I didn't know how to access. So say in my project here, I wanted to figure out how to access the second clip on video track one uh, in the active sequence. And I knew that app.project.active sequence was an item that I can access. What I would do is I would declare a variable linked to that item, and then I would uh, press the run button, and this would populate an active sequence would be an object in here that I could dig down through. So if I open that up, I can see that, okay, there's my access to audio tracks, there's my access to markers, the project items, and to video tracks. But when I look in the video tracks, I don't see how I can access those clips that are on that video track. So I'm stuck. So the next method I would go through to see how I could access this, besides, I guess there's also going to the sample code and looking through that, which just requires a little bit of sifting through a lot of information. What I would do next is I would come into extend script and I would use this property called the reflect property. Um, and basically what you would do is I would link that same item up here 
to dot reflect dot methods and dot reflect dot properties. And then I would alert those and it will return all that information that we're looking for. So if I run this, you'll see that, okay, the properties I can access within an active sequence are the ID, sequence ID, name, audio tracks, video tracks, frame size horizontal, frame size vertical, time base, zero point, blah, blah, blah. And then if I click okay, the next one is gonna be bind, unbind. These are gonna be the methods that I could run on that item. But then, okay, I found that information out. I knew that there's video tracks is uh, an item that's accessible past this. So if I go in here and type in video tracks and zero, and I do the same for the next one, this is going to do the same thing. And you can see what I'm doing here, ID, media, type, clips, transitions, proto, it's going to do the same thing with the methods. This is very useful and very accurate. It gives me all the information I'm looking for, but it's a step-by-step -step process that takes quite a bit of time jumping back from Extend Script to Premiere. That's where Property Explorer comes in because I don't want to jump back and forth between Premiere and Extend Script if I'm just trying to gather some information. What I'll do is I'll come up and run the Property Explorer and then I'll type in that item and I'll run it. And in here I get all the information that I can access. You can see video tracks, you can see audio tracks, you can see the number of tracks even that are inside of those. A lot of information and even better than that is you can check the method list and then get a whole list of the methods that you can run on this item. So from here, I see, okay, video tracks. Um, I can just go video tracks and because that's gonna be an array, I'll set it to zero. I wanna target the first video track and we'll run that and I can see that, all right, I can have access to clips. Now, because there's gonna be multiple clips on this line, I'm just assuming that this is gonna be clip number zero and this is going to be clip number one over here. So I'll run dot clips zero and we'll get all the information on that. The in point, the out point, start, start ticks, duration, all this information right here within Premiere that I can just kind of jot down before I run into my script and write everything out. You can even see that, okay, if I wanted to say access the opacity on this, I could look down and I could see, all right, components, that sounds like something that's gonna, you know, get me to the characteristics of this clip. And there's two items in there. I'm gonna run components zero. And boom, the display name of that is opacity. And I bet in there, there's a method I can do, not in this, I see properties. So what I'll go to is that now that I'm in the opacity component, I'll check out what properties I can change. And maybe the zero, see what that's going to be. And that display name is opacity. And you can see that I can get keys, add key, remove key, and get and set the value. So there's still some trial and error in this. You have to run it, dig deeper, add upon what you've already written to find out this information. But at least you're not jumping between extend script and back and alert boxes and all of that. It's all convenient right here within Premiere. This is a huge help. It's going to help you get through all of your scripts so much quicker. I highly recommend downloading this add-on. So there we go. Thanks for watching this movie. In the next movie, I'm going to go through a super helpful function that I use in almost every single one of my scripts on finding a bin anywhere in the project. That way you can target the items within that bin to run your script on. So please watch the next video. That's going to be a huge help for any script you write in the future based on a bin-based workflow.